Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing off Structure Gel API, a very useful world edit mod that I plan to use in my tutorials, with handy features like a build tool and gels. So without further ado, let's investigate what this mod does. Now for the CurseForge page, so that way you can get a better idea of what this mod is. It's a special kind of mod, world edit, and it's an API that makes structures easier on developers. Considering I spent a very long time on that Aurora Palace, I've gotten quite used to it. And I will say, it is incredibly useful. Unfortunately, it's only for Java Edition. But essentially, it has some extra features that you can add on using code, which means any coders watching this, and you play this mod, something's missing, you can add onto the existing things. There's also some gels, and what these gels do is they're special forms of structure voids with differing mechanics. And this is what they look like. So down here, you can see that there are quite a few things, and this mod has been around for quite a while. But essentially, there are some building tools, and this can get quite complex, so I'm not going to go over every single thing here, considering how many gels there are as well. Now, in-game, we have all six gels here. I'm going to be covering these first before moving on to the building tool, since these ones are quite interesting even if their uses are limited. Each one acts as a spreading block, and each one has their own use case scenario, but in general, all of them spread, are destroyed by gunpowder, and act as structure voids when loaded. So, you can use these to fill up structures that might be otherwise annoying. So, starting off with the red one. You place while sneaking, as with all of them, and this one will replace only air while spreading across cardinal directions. So, going a bit further, and yes, this is my building world if booted up on 120. And you can see, it starts spreading. If you were to place this inside of a structure, then it would stop at its walls. So, say you have a cube, place it inside, and it will fill up only said cube. So keep this in mind if you need to fill in a normal structure. So it's your general case usage gel. Because it's going to work in most structures, especially if they don't have many details. Next up, we have Orange Gel. This one, I'm not entirely sure how it would be used in structure block applications, but it certainly has its uses inside normal building. Basically, when you place it down, depending on how large your current stack is, it will make a larger diamond. Essentially, it's red gel, but you get to choose the limit. So, looking like this, it's pretty basic. So, placing it down, you can see I had three, so it makes that many. Pretty easy to clean up. You could use another fill command or something such as the building tool in order to use it more effectively. This will go all the way up to 50, which means it only has a stack size of 50, which is all weird. But at the same time, it definitely has its usage. So, spreads as much as you want as long as it's below 50, and then you can get rid of it with some gunpowder. Overall, a little bit more niche gel, but it has its uses as well. Now, we have the weird one of the bunch, yellow gel. This one will spread on a flat plane depending on how it was placed. Essentially, this is good for chopping a room in two. And then you can gunpowder it in order to undo its effects. Basically, this one will also work on walls. And you can see it only works on one dimension at a time. Which means if you only want one wall or a room cut in half, yellow gel is going to be very useful for that. Since it will, it will expand and then it won't make a mess. Unlike things like red or cyan gel. Speaking of which, the other three gels are a bit more chaotic, since these ones will spread along diagonals, but they also have their usages because they'll have unique effects when exposed to the sky. For our next one, we have ourselves green gel, which is really lime. 
This one acts like red gel, except when placed, it will go around corners. And when I mean corners, I mean real corners. Say if you have a box, this box will contain both red and green. If I make a hollow box, it will still contain both. But if you have the corners cut off, green will escape and red will not. In order to get a better idea of how this all works, here's the box. I place down red gel, and it does not escape. And then I go inside, and then I do the same thing with green gel. It also does not escape. But if I were to cut off a corner of this build, say this one, it doesn't have to be as large, I'm making it larger for demonstration. Say I place more red gel, it's going to stay inside. And then, say I now decide I want green. Well, green is going to escape because it will go around block corners. You can see how it has a different shape when fully expanded. And then it can all be destroyed with gunpowder. Essentially, green is used for builds that have complete solid edges, but have complex things on the inside like vines or other things that might get in the way. For the final gels, we have ourselves cyan and blue which are green and red respectively, but with a new gimmick. Place blue, and it will stay inside roofed areas, and cyan is simply green, but also staying inside roofed areas. Essentially, these two are good for a build that you're doing on the surface, and you only want the insides filled with something. I'm not entirely sure exactly how you'd use that, but I can see potential applications with structure voids for various other ones like red gel. And since they all act as structure voids, then you can now build your builds without worrying about random generation errors like random pieces leaking in. Now, it's time for the tool that most builders will find the most useful, the building tool. And this one has a bunch of uses. I can't cover every single one simply because it's so complicated, but I'll do my best. If you press R, it will open this menu. You have 8 different options. You have Move, Clone, Line, Fill, Flood, Extend, Shape, and Replace. Replace is pretty easy. You aim at a block, and it deletes it. Or you can change this item in the middle to something else. Say I need to build out of acacia planks, totally not because alphabetical order. And I decide I want this cube back, but I want an acacia. Well, I can use control Z, I can redo the action with control Y, and that will save up to 30 actions, which means you can make a couple of mistakes before it starts deleting old ones. Now, if I left click, not right click, notice it does nothing. Then it replaces the stuff, which is quite useful. For use cases with the replace tool, already some basic things could be thought up with, but there's another thing. There's the fact that it's incredibly good for deforestation and making areas smoother. Since although it's not necessarily a smoothening tool, still, if you use a giant fill command in order to flatten an area and there's a bunch of stone, then you can replace it with dirt, and that will look a lot better. Left click here, and now I've de-leafed to this tree. Left click on the bark, now it's gone. If there's an inconvenient forest and you don't want to accidentally destroy a couple trees that you kinda like, go in here with this, and then you can delete any tree that you want because, of course, it will be outlined, so that way you don't make any mistakes. For our next tool, we have the shape command. And this one will cut down a lot of time when it comes to shape generation. And it can help alleviate some of the struggles with copying things from sh shape generators like circles and spheres. So, go into this. You can choose whatever shape you want. There's a lot more options in 1.20. So, make sure to check this every time you make a new version. And then, through here, you can choose whatever shape. I'll choose a hollow cube. And what do you know? I have a cube that happens to be hollow. No more having to use a bunch of fill commands to get various things like that. And this is pretty simple. You can add onto it with more commands, 
and you can combine them. One other thing is integrity. You'll see this value a lot. Depending on what number you put in between 0 and 1, that's how much of the build will generate. Based on how high the, or low the number is, that's a fraction of how much of the build will be used. This is only half of the build. Now I'll say I only want a tenth of the build. That is 0.1. Or what if I want pretty much the entire build, but I want like one or two blocks gone. That is 99 one hundredths. And you can see how that will be quite useful. And since that one's pretty basic, and there's another basic one, we have ourselves extend. I don't know what fuzzy does. Well, it tells you in the right. So, diagonal blocks, that's really useful actually. And then, you can replace air or air and liquid, so that way you can build underwater. And then, you can hold down the left click. And this will automatically keep placing. It's a little slower since I'm recording, it takes a lot of computing power to do this. But you can spam click might notice some minor FPS drops, but you can see how much faster this will make building. Since if you go to the ground and decide, hmm, I want this random piece of land to be taller, well, you can click a couple times and now you have taller land, which is incredibly useful. For this next one, you're going to see a little less usage, but it's the flood command. This one will make a flat plane and then it will replace everything on that plane with your selected block. It's still dark prismarine. I'm going to change it to dark oak planks for consistency, so that way, well, not consistency, so that way you can see. And it's a little laggy. It might take a moment to place, but eventually it will place. And notice a lot of blocks later, it fills in everything below it. So, might be a bit destructive, so use this one with extreme caution. Notice how 80 block radius makes a massive area. So, make sure you're absolutely sure you want to use flood, especially if you're in an open area. Luckily, you can still undo it, and the undo is pretty quick. So, keep that in mind. We'll lag spike once it's done, and then that's flood. Fill is pretty complicated and so are move and clone. So we have line. It also has integrity, and then it's pretty simple. Right click, and then shift right click. This is one of the ones that will use this. And right click for the red, shift right click for the blue, and normal click in order to place. So you can see how this will work. And now I can make lines however I want. So imagine how quick you could build a spider web like this. Pretty useful tool. For the next ones, clone and move, they're remarkably similar to each other. And at first, move might seem useless. However, it has some hidden usages once you realize what the limitations of clone are. Clone's pretty easy. You do the selection one, selection two. Don't forget, you can use the top right for this, makes it a lot easier. And then you can keep cloning. So, that one has its own usages. You can use mirroring, so that way it changes the side. Say you have red on the left, then if you press this, then it'll be red on the right, and whatnot. You can rotate it, which allows you to only build a quarter of a build and then copy paste the rest of it. Saves a bunch of time, integrity, replace, you can choose whatever you want to replace between everything and air, cut, which is essentially the current move command that destroys the original one. Speaking of move, we have this. And notice how it moves it like a piston. So this is quite useful in case you accidentally get something one block off, rather than something that needs a bunch of movement, like a clone cut command like that. So you can see all the various usages of this. Notice I've gotten a lot of messes up here through the simple recording of this video. And that shows you how much power the Structure Gel API has. And then we have Fill. This one is a little weird because at first it's a fill command. And then you realize it doesn't have the limits. And you can use Integrity, Retain State, which means if you want an area of all furnaces that happen to be smelting and have exactly 3 coal and 7 ancient debris with a half of the timer done, then you can have that. Not entirely sure why I need that specific part, 
but that's certainly something you can do. So I set this to 0.3, and what do you know? I have this weird blob here. So you can see all of the customization that you get from the Structure Gel API. For the final feature, there is the weight. And the weight of each thing, well, is its palette. Go inside here, and you can add as many blocks as you want. But if you want some blocks to generate more than others, change their weight. The higher the weight, the more likely it will generate. So I'm going to edit this a little to make it easier. Each one of these is a fraction, so 30, and then look at how everything adds up. 5 plus 15 plus 30 is 50, and then we add 30 here, simplify that, and that's 3 fifths. So 60% of the blocks will be orange concrete. So if I place it down now, what do you know? That happens to be true. So think of it like fractions, and if you can handle fractions, then you can handle this. And this, of course, helps a lot with randomization. Generally, it might inflate your building skill, so if you're using it in a build battle, maybe think about it again. But otherwise, it's an incredibly useful tool in case you want to get some easy randomization down and fixed. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Link to Structure Gel in the description below. I'm currently using the NeoForge version for 1.20.4 in case some features are missing depending on your version. Gearsaw out.